So welcome to uh, a taste of the School of Business with Crystal Crawford. <laughs> Every time I create something like this, I call it like Crystal Crawford School of Business, and then I take that off because I'm like, it's not actually my school. Um, <laughs> so welcome to the most nonlinear um, conversation about business that you're probably ever going to hear. Um, and welcome to whatever it is you want to get out of this call and out of the next six months, because that's what you're invited to after this call is six months of actually playing really dynamically with your business. Um, I, I think I have questions. Some of you guys send in questions, and so I'm going to start with those. Um, and you are more than welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, and also we have a chat here. So if you'd rather just type in the questions, I have it open and I can see that as well. This isn't so much of a facilitation call as it is going to be more about really um, addressing questions and speaking about them, giving you information, and then talking about what's next. So I, first of all, love business. Love it. I love it. Um, I think in the last few days, I've like fully, fully acknowledged how much I love it. It's like sex to me. Honestly, there's, I don't, there's like two things I like that are at the top of the list and there's sex and there's business. Like they're, they're right up there. Um, and honestly, for me, it's the play of discovering what I'm capable of. I started this uh, facilitation business <laughs> two years ago, um, maybe, maybe a year and a half ago. And I basically took my income from $20,000 a year, um, waiting tables and managing a restaurant. Well, there was probably a little bit more than that because I had tips, um, to $160,000 in six months. And I did that by playing. <laughs> now, I don't like throwing numbers around just for the sake of throwing numbers around. I know there's some people that do that and just like, oh my God, I'm the six figure income thing. But there does seem to be this ceiling that we've bought and decided is real and true, that that's hard, that that takes time um, and that I can do it, but you can't. And even though I said this was a facility, it wasn't a facilitation call. Everything that bullshit is, can we destroy it and create it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, call, insurance, boys and beyonds. I lied. Um, so uh, there, you know, I, I was just on the Gary's business calls and I just bought his other business calls. So there's going to be a lot of Gary Douglas in this next six months and in this call. But one of the things, <laughs> One of the things he said in a conversation that he was having with Simone, he's like, I'm going to do a business call on like how to create a million dollar business from awareness. And I was like, oh, I could do that call. Because <laughs> I'm in the process of creating that right now. Like my business has three times this year already. Um, and it isn't because I followed any of the structures that are out there about how to build an online business. It's because I've been willing to follow my awareness. And I have gone to many, many conclusions over the years and I've gone to many judgments and decisions and I've experienced um, the awareness that all of that creates. So my target for this call is to really empower you to start knowing what it is that you know about business, that you've refused that you know, denied that you know, pretended that you don't know, that if you would allow yourself to know it would lead you to business, would lead you to money, would lead you to the future that you're aware of. And so anything and everything that doesn't allow that, even though that's not one clearing, that'll change it all. Can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, online, insurance, poison, beyonds. So there's so many different things that you can sign up for around business. And my first invitation to you is to follow what's light for you because you know, you know. And, and there's different facets of business as well, as I'm sure you've noticed. Like there's the skills that you need to learn to be able to do the thing. So like, I don't know if you noticed, but each of you speaks a language. <laughs> when you were first out of the womb, you didn't speak this language. You spoke energy, right? You had to actually learn to speak whatever language you're speaking. Or a lot of you speak at least two languages, some three or four or five, right? So all of those were this process of learning this language. So with any business, there's a language to learn, right? If you want to get into stock trading, you've got to start learning the language of stock trading. If you want to get into playing an instrument, you have to start learning the language of music. If you want to get into a bars business, you've got to start learning the language of bars business. What's required? What do you have to know to do that? Right now, we've added to your bars business a new website, which is creating a, a new language for a lot of you. Like, oh my God, how do you use this beast of a thing, you know? Um, 
So um, with online business, there's this language to learn of landing pages and websites and stuff and, and graphics and promotion and, and all of these other things that a lot of people do that you get to play with and see if they actually work for you. So part of this school idea was to actually give us a space where we could skill share, skill share our different um, skills. And because I have no interest in being the source of everything that, <laughs> that we need to learn. One, because I don't want to be that. And two, uh, because there's so many different things that all of you guys bring to the table. So there's this Skillshare piece. And then there's like, as you're ongoing and as you're asking for more, first of all, how do you do that? What do you ask for that actually generates a business beyond your wildest dreams? How do you use the tools in a practical way to actually lead yourself to business, to lead yourself to more clients, to lead yourself to um, an expanded future? Like what, what are those things? How do you get out of your way? How do you get out of your own way? And um, so, so many things. Okay. So, so there's that. I'm going to preface with that. And then I'm going to go to some of the questions that were sent in. Um, <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm getting there. So, one question that was sent in was, "What? <laughs> I love this. What questions can I ask to get clarity on what I would truly like to create?" Does anybody else ever have this question? What questions can I ask to get clarity on what I would truly like to create? I know I love consciousness. I know I love stuff. I know I love 2,500 different things. What questions can I ask to get clarity? Um, this is such a funny question because most of the time when you're asking a question to get clarity, what you're desiring is an answer. And we've decided that answers are super clear. So we would like the clarity so that we can have the answer so that we can know what we like to create. So everything that is times a godzillion, can we destroy it and create all that? <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all lane, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Um, so the nonlinear way, the humanoid way of creating business is like, well, it's really fun for me to like show up in front of people, so I'm going to do a video. <laughs> and the way I started on Facebook actually was through writing. I did a lot of writing in the very beginning, and so people started really loving what I was writing. And I've kind of gotten out of that because I don't have as much to say with this. I'm doing more out of my out of my face holes, as Katie Rubin would put it. So, um, so that's the humanoid way of creating business. Oh, it's really fun for me to run bars. Do you want me to run your bars? And I can run her bars too. And you want me to, like humanoids creation of business comes out of their enthusiasm for doing whatever it is that they're doing. And that therefore a business is born. Um, when I was first, I've done so many things in my life. One of my iterations was as a landscape designer. And um, I had just finished owning a pizzeria. So I had a restaurant for three years. And then that ended, long story. And I got into another relationship. I needed another career. And so I went back to school to learn landscape design. Well, uh, school took too long for me. I went through it faster than anyone else. So before school was over, I was ready to do clients. And I was like, what would be the fastest way of getting clients with this? Like I consider I'd never done landscape design before. I had no experience, no website. I don't have a website. Um, I just wanted to start doing the thing. So what's the fastest way? And I'm like, well, who needs landscape designers? I'm like, well, contractors do the work. Like we have these guys that install rocks that need a person to tell them where to put the rocks. So I was like, I can be that person. Where do these contractors congregate? Oh, they buy stuff. They buy stuff at landscape design places. I'm cute. I could wear like, you know, pants that look kind of rugged and boots and put my hair up in a ponytail. So I did that. And I went to a landscape design supply store and I was like, you know, you guys see a lot of contractors through here. Do they ever need, do they ever talk to you about needing a landscape designer? You know, I've, there's cute girls standing in front of them and they were like, yeah, actually, do you have any cards? Oh, I didn't bring any today, but I, I can bring some back for you tomorrow. I ran home. I designed a business card. <laughs> I went back and I gave them cards and then they started talking to all the contractors. Bam, business is born. That's how humanoids create stuff. That's how we create. So, so anywhere and everywhere, you've made this fucking hard for yourself. Will you destroy and then create all that? boys and beyonds. Now, um, yeah, so that's the first thing. So what questions can I ask to get clarity on what I would truly desire to create? One of the questions you can truly start to ask and get awareness about is, what do I truly desire to create? <laughs> and just start choosing. 
you want to ask the question, be present with the energy that comes up and just keep choosing and just keep choosing. What do I choose? Anything. Anything that's fun for you. Choose anything that's fun for you. Now, listen, you're humanoid, so you're an obsessive compulsive creator. And if you're not obsessively compulsively creating your future, you're going to obsessively compulsively create crap. So you've got to obsessively compulsively create something. And if you're going to do that, it might as well be your future. That's all. That's my point of view. <laughs> um, and so that can show up any way you'd like it to. So for example, I'm in the process of starting a new business with a friend who's invited me to do it with her. And where to start? Let's have a meeting. We have this great idea. It's a great idea. Let's have a meeting and talk about where we can start with that. That's one of the first questions you can ask. Where can we start with this? Okay, well, one of the things that we'd like to do is invite people to play with us. Okay, what's required? Well, we need people. We need a place for them to go. We need a system that gets them there. All right, so what's required to get all that? Well, we need someone to build that website. We, I want the website to do something specific. I want when people go to the website for them to have almost no other choice but then to play. So what sort of system do we need to put in place for that to occur? Huh, well there's ClickFunnels. There's this landing page that sort of looks like that that we can hack and sort of take it apart and go, well how do all these moving pieces work? Actually most of my business I created from learning how to hack it. So I would look at what somebody else was creating and I would go, how did they do that? And I would reverse engineer it and I would go, oh, they have an email thingy that does this thing and then they connect it to that thing. What does this button do? How did they get that button? What are they using to create this page? And I would literally pull apart the different pieces, reverse engineer it and go, well, I can do that. So if they can do that, I can do that. So I would go buy that service, whether it was Lead Pages or Weebly or whatever the fuck and put it together myself. And then I would put it out into the world to see what it did. Well, sometimes it did fuck all because people didn't know what the fuck I was inviting them to. And sometimes it created something. And, but it always created something, right? I got to learn a new skill or I got to learn that that didn't really do much. So <laughs> what else is possible? Apparently, just when you put a website together doesn't mean people are going to click anything. So what else is required to um, invite them to click? right? What else is required? How do you in, interact with people in a way that would make them even want to click your shit? But that creating that first piece created awareness, which then created all these other questions. So if you never create the first piece, you never have any other questions to ask because nothing's instigating in your world, right? It's like until you step off of the ledge, you don't realize that you might have wanted to have wings on the back you know, or so now you're off the ledge and like, oh, what else is possible? <laughs> I've got this parachute I forgot about, right? And you pull the thing. Um, but that's how everything in business creates is like, oh, oh, oh my God. And then sometimes you get really surprised and like people actually click your shit and they come play with you. And then it's even more surprising because it turns out you're brilliant. Who knew? So what, um, <laughs> I don't even know where I started with all that. What oh, questions can oh, I ask? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Talk about that fear of your own brilliance. Because ah. you said you might discover you might just be brilliant. Who knows? Oops. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the first piece, huge piece is that fear is a distractor. It's not even real. And one of the things we talk about in Right Voice for You, and I'll come away in December as an actual facilitator of this class, but I've taken the facilitator's class twice, um, is fear and excitement, and I know you've heard this, they show up exactly the same in your body. So I've done a lot of performing over my life. I've been a piano person forever. So I did a lot of piano recitals. And um, so right before you perform, there's all of this whoosh, whoosh, runs through your body and you're like shaking and you're like, there's all this energy in your body. And it's misidentified and misapplied as terror, fear, stage fright, nerves, but what it is, is like that moment, you actually require that energy to, to get yourself, like as if you're a swimmer, you require that energy to get yourself off the block and into the water. You require that energy to get out onto the stage and do the thing. Like it's energy that's actually required that we make really, really wrong. And so anytime you're doing something new, whether you're launching a new program, like even the school of business, right? I'm like, I've made it so significant. I've been wanting to create this for like eight months, you know? And I'm getting really good at no point of view, but as soon as I started creating this, I'm like, it's so significant. What if I fuck this up? You know? Um, 
And so even putting it out into the world, I was like, I was that familiar energy of like, can I do, is this going to fuck, blah, 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 right? Um, yeah, exactly. What if not? What if it doesn't? What if, what if, what, what if, if, what if, what if? And so that's yeah. at that point that you've got to get really intense with yourself and go, I'm either going to stay in what if it doesn't, or I'm going to choose something else. And I'm going to choose. So yesterday I went to one of my friends and I'm like, can you help me with this? Cause I like, I literally cannot get this. I can't get out of this thing that's going on in my head. And it was like, there's this decision I've made. Can you help me? In five minutes we changed it. And that is why I'm creating the school of business the way I am, because it's like in one minute in a, in a, in watching a Facebook live once a week or in a small group coaching session, you can in five minutes change whatever's going on that's stopping you. Cause it's, we stop ourselves, right? And we stop ourselves with that head chatter that goes on in our heads where that we've made more real than our capacity to choose. So most of the time I'm able to choose beyond it now. Most of the time I start to recognize that the, what if it doesn't, what if people don't, what if I can't is not actually what's real and true for me now. And I know that now. Um, sometimes that becomes more real and true than my capacity to choose. And that's when I phone a friend. Um, so, so the information is what's actually true about you is that you can. And if you choose to commit to that, it will create something. Now, that doesn't mean, I didn't, did you notice that I didn't say that will create people coming to play with you? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It means that it will create something. And that was a really, really, really important thing for me to get because so many times when I first began this journey, um, I would create a class and it, and let's say people wouldn't play or I'd have a two or three people choose it. And I would go into the wrongness of that creation and I would judge me and I would judge the creation and it would kill me. Like it was like I was stabbing myself in the kidney and I wasn't quite killing myself, but I was maiming me, you know, because I'm so stupid. And if I had just known uh, nah, 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 nah. <sighs> everything that is, can we destroy it and create all that right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys and beyond. So what I started to develop a muscle about is that every is the awareness that every single thing you create creates something so it creates something for the future it creates awareness I mean the, the, the gist of business the gist of dating the gist of life is that choice creates awareness and what we've done is we've made the end results more valuable than awareness so what if the creation of business was to create more awareness and in the creation of awareness you would lead yourself to money Everything that is times a godzillion. Can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, fuck, all nature, it's boys, me, There was something else that Gary said in the last three days of business calls too, and I'm going to be re-listening to those like a motherfucker because I could hear like every third word maybe. Um, but he said, if he basically said like, if the sole purpose of your business is just to create money, then why are you doing business? Basically was his, was his point. He's like, what if the sole purpose of your business was different than that? What if the purpose of your business was to create something greater on the planet? What if the purpose of your business was actually to create more consciousness? And what I've noticed is that I've, I've done that place where I'm doing business to create money. Like that is why I'm doing business. There is no other reason for me. And I did it for a long time and my business stayed really, really small. And what changed it was the energy pulls. So we're going to be doing energy pulls in these six months, by the way. Um, and and really starting, and, and see what the energy pulls does is that you go infinite, right? And you start pulling in what you desire from that infinite space. So you actually finally give what you're asking for space. You actually let it be the space that it is, which is this massive thing. And you start to get that you're this massive thing. And so everything you begin to ask for starts to be this massive space thing. Thing it's not exactly accurate, but <laughs> using language for some of this. So, so what started to occur was like I just started creating business as that space. I started generating, you know, classes and things like that as that space. And what's happened is the money's just following. The money's just occurring, right? And and Gary said that to me. He said once that he's like money's like shit. It's a byproduct, <laughs> which I thought was really crass, and it made me laugh all at the same time. So. So what we tend to try to do with business is go, if I create this class, it's going to get me these people, which is going to give me this money, which is going to let me go to this other class or pay this other bill. 
that's as linear as you could possibly make business. And it doesn't create, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's not easy. When you have no point of view and you're just like, I just want to create this class because it's fun. 15 people show up because it's fun, because there's space, because it's ease, because there's no point of view. You have no point of view. And so what we want to start to look at is like, where have you, where in your life have you created a lot of ease and magic? And how can you then extrapolate that ease and magic into the creation of what you've decided has to be hard, labor intensive, ordered, linear, blah, 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 right? That's what we want to start to look at is how do we use that capacity for need and tug that you have? Because you can need and tug disaster into your world like nobody's business. <laughs> How do we then take that capacity for needing, which is that I need a piece of chocolate cake right fucking now. I don't care what it takes. I don't care who's got to get it for me. I don't care if I have to drive all the way across the province. I need a piece of chocolate cake. And then somehow by magic that caught some friend gets a ping and brings you a piece of chocolate cake like two hours later without you even having to do anything because you were so busy being that energy of I need chocolate cake that somebody got the message and brought it to you. Now that's the, that's the capacity for need and tug. And then we use it in another way for destruction where we've decided something's going to be hard. And so we tug in everything that proves our point of view that it's going to be hard. Yesterday I was having such a funky day. I, I was, I woke up in the morning and made some decision and, and the rest of the day was like so bizarre. And I swear to God, I got nacho cheese all over me. Um, like I got lost, I got into traffic and I knew what was going on. I knew it. I knew I was creating it because I, my reality is a reality of ease. But as soon as I make a decision, as soon as you make a decision about anything, you create that as a reality. So as soon as you make a decision that people won't pay you a certain amount, as soon as you make a decision that business is hard, as soon as you make a decision that I live in a small town and nobody will come to my classes, guess what shows up? So this is where you're going to start to look at what's actually creating my reality right now. What points of view am I functioning from that are creating my reality right now? And it's easy to tell what your reality is because you can look around and see what's going on. You can go, okay, so what's the reality of my bank account right now? What's the reality of my business right now? What's the reality of my life right now? Is it in shambles? Is it creating? Is it generating? Or is it sort of like in hoarding mode? Like what's really going on? And what choices can I make to begin to change this? Cool. It seems that everything I try doesn't work out. I desire more clients, more money, and it doesn't seem to be showing up. So I always look at what you guys say. I always look at what I say. And, and one of the interesting things about that is it seems like everything I try doesn't work out. So when you're just trying to do business, it doesn't work out. Because guess what? Trying is not a choice. Trying is not a choice. Choosing creates. Trying creates and validates your point of view that it wasn't going to work in the first place. So everywhere you've misidentified and misapplied trying is choosing and choosing is trying. Can we destroy and then create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, choice, boys, events. Guess what creates a business? I'm fucking creating this business and I don't fucking care what it takes. That's the energy of it. I don't care what it takes. I don't care who I have to talk to. I don't care how many heads I have to put my hands on. I don't care how many videos I have to do that nobody watches. I am creating this business. What's next? That's it. That's what creates a business. And that's I, when I jumped off the deep end, I was working for another facilitator. Um, so we're heading into our third maestro class this year when my first maestro class was two years ago. And right after maestro, I finally made it to maestro. I said, I know you guys have heard the story, sold all my stuff, went on the road, went to maestro, came back to Vancouver, hair was on fire and I had no money, zero money, totally maxed out, used all my credit and um, quit my job. So here I am in Vancouver with this brand new guy who I thought it was a great idea to move in with like after three weeks of dating him and he's like, he thought I was this rock star and I pull into Vancouver and I'm broke and I'm depressed <laughs> because maestro, <laughs> it totally changed my whole life and I didn't know what to do. And all I knew is that the job that I was doing at the time just wasn't working for me anymore. So I quit. So I created for myself a situation where my back was up against the wall and I had to choose or die. That was, were pretty much my two choices, literally. And um, so I spent three, three weeks dying, uh, crying, upset, pathetic. And then I was like, well, 
he said that he wanted me to be the woman that I was when he met me, fine. And I literally just chose something. I just, I was like, well, the first tool I'm going to use personally is interesting point of view. I have this point of view and I'm going to invite the rest of the world to a three day challenge. That was the only two pieces of information I had. So I did one graphic, I put together one Facebook group and put it out there. Hey, if anybody else wants to join me, I'm going to be using this tool for the next three days. Come use it with me. And I had 300 people in the group within like three days. Everyone was like, oh my God, I love that tool, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know what else to do from there. So then somebody suggested, Crystal, we would love to pay you for being in this group. And I'm like, you would? <laughs> I was like, how do I even do that? What, what, how do you get paid for what? It so I researched PayPal links. I figured out how to do that. I researched how to put together this really bizarre landing page thing with three different choices. I made it too complicated. It took me too long. And I ended up creating like my first $900 online. That is not linear. But do you know how many online entrepreneurs, I watch so many webinars from all these different coaches and things like that to talk about the, the number of people that never make $1 online. And I look at that and I'm like, wow, it's, and the more webinars I do with other people, the more I realize it's that because that person is teaching all of these other people how to do it the way that worked for them. They're not actually empowering anybody to do it in a way that works for you. And guess who knows the way it works for you? You do. I don't know the way it works for you. You do. So business created as a humanoid doesn't work when you're being taught how to do it by another human or even another humanoid. So Russell Brunson is a great example for me. He's super inspiring. I mean, he, he created click funnels. He, he creates like $17,000 a day from one of his funnels and he's got 17 funnels. Like it's ridiculous. And, and he does all this different kind of coaching and stuff. And I looked at, I was really looking at his universe because I really admire what he created. And I was like, Ah, you no, know, Russell keeps saying that it's the funnels that create this and funnels do really contribute and I can, we're going to learn how to do funnels. If anybody wants to learn how to do funnels, that's one of the things we're going to go through um, because funnels take people on a journey. But if you're not Russell Brunson and you create in the exact same way Russell Brunson did and it doesn't work for you, guess what point of view you're validating? Uh, it wasn't going to work for me anyway. So. You still have to take what everybody else knows and go, hey, which part of this can create for me? And what about this would work for me? And how would I do this in a way that's, that works for me, is my way, basically. And so now with everything that I learn online and all the different things that I um, choose and create and everything, I, I look at what they're doing and I, I look at the brilliance and I'm like, okay, that part's really brilliant. That part is getting people to go from step A to step B. Like, for example, my website right now really doesn't invite you to a lot of choice. I mean, it does in the sense of like there's stuff you can pay for. But what's interesting about all these things that I've had on my website that people can pay for is that after the class is done, they don't pay for it. And I'm like, well, that's not really creating anything. So what else is possible? This is another question that you want to ask when you're in your business. It's like, okay, so that's not actually creating what I desire. So what else is possible that I haven't considered? So I took them all down and now I'm going to be looking at, okay, so do people really just desire live stuff with me? I actually like doing live stuff. So that really works for me. Um, do I have an interest in selling past stuff? Not really. Don't really care. Okay. That's really interesting. So maybe I won't choose that. Um, but you know where I got that awareness was from choosing to put it up and seeing what that created and then seeing what I actually would like to choose with that. Now, I do know there's a possibility with past products that I've never considered that I don't really have an interest in creating. So one of the things I'm wondering about in my business right now is who can I add that would love to expand that part of the business with a lot of ease? Who can I add? Who would love to like make my past products into a thing? I don't even know how to do that. I don't even care. Somebody does. Somebody likes my stuff enough to go, I can do that. I've got some ideas. I'd like to play with that. Right? So that's the other thing about being a totally out of control, out of definition, out of linearity, out of concentricity entity um, is being willing to add people that are going to actually be able to contribute. Now, one of the things that prevents people from adding people is, yeah, but how am I going to pay them? Everything that decision, judgment, computation, and conclusion is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, goodbye, five, five, call, insurance, boys and beyonds. There are so many, there are infinite possibilities for currencies in this new reality. There's, what we've decided is that there's one currency and that it's cash. Cash is the only currency. Is that actually true? 
I cannot tell you how many people contribute their energy and time and skill set to access that work for Contra, for example. They work for class credit. Um, there's a lot of people in my business that actually have gone, I just want the class for free. Can I do anything for that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd love for you to do this. There's other people that have worked for session time with me. There is, um, there's deals that you can create that have to do with percentages. Um, but you have to be willing to go beyond what you've decided is possible into the what else is possible to even have the awareness of any of that, right? <sighs> any questions? I'm just like, bah, 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 bah. Am I frying you, Tachiaya? You look a little fried. <laughs> hey, Crystal, I have a question. Yeah. Well, I asked you in the email, but like for me, I I have like three people right now that I'm thinking about one, that I want to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And two of them are not access. And then you come up with this school, and I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> and I get all excited. And then, um, but then I get confused because like I. You know, part of me, I mean, all of me loves excess, but then I get confused because I, you know, I see what these people have created in their lives with yep. two other coaches, and that's also exciting for me too. But then, like, their languaging is not excess, so it's like it's kind of like I'm living in two different worlds. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've done lots of classes that are in access. I took uh, Jeff Walker's product launch formula. I worked with Janine Blackwell. I've like signed up for all these different webinars. I've got um, I've done ClickFunnels stuff with Russell, Russell Brunson. So I've done a lot of different things. For me, in the beginning, it was like I, I was pretty convinced that um, I did the same thing. It was like I was looking at what they'd created in their lives financially, and I was like, oh, I want that. So I concluded personally that going into their classes was going to teach me how to do what they did. So I did that. I actually took their classes and I was like, this is not actually, this is not what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of information and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just giving you mm -hmm. my experience, but like it was a lot of information about how to set up different systems. And I did get different pieces from that, you know, like mm -hmm. this email thing and I use Kajabi now and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized that one of the, the consistent thing that nobody else offered me was empowering me to know what I know. Mm -hmm. Nobody was interested in empowering me to know what I know. They were interested in giving me their system so that I could get the same results so that they could get a good testimonial from me or something to that effect. And, um, and I tried their systems. Actually, I tried to do, I didn't try, I did. Like I actually took one of Jeff Walker's things and I did it verbatim and it created some money. It didn't have the joy in it that I liked. It didn't have the lightness in it that I am. Um, so, I, so, but I needed to choose that to have that awareness. Yeah. And sometimes you've just got to follow your knowing and go, yeah, this is awesome. And I'm going to choose this to get some awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and you may just want to ask yourself truth. What will my life be like in five years? Yes or no. So I have, a, I have a different way of asking this question now, actually, since I've been taking classes with Gary in the last month, I've been really observing the way he chooses. And you can choose from the way of like, I'm really confused and I don't know because, but, and get into yourself into this big head trip. Or you can go look at one choice and go, what will my life be like in five years? Yes or no? No. Okay. Done. What will my life be like in five years if I choose this? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Choosing it. Because the things that are going to expand your future the fastest, they make no logical sense. You can't make them make sense. And it doesn't have anything to do with access speak or non-access speak. What it has to do with is the energy that you're, you and your business are aware of, of your future. Mm. That's what it taps you into immediately without your brain. It takes your brain offline and goes, what are we aware of as a future? That energy. Yes. Okay. I don't, I've never chosen anything that makes sense that when it, let me restructure that sentence. Every time I've chosen something that has expanded my future, it makes absolutely no sense. I usually have no money for it. I usually have no idea how I'm going to get there or how I'm going to create it or how it's going to show up every single time. Mm -hmm. And every time I've chosen it, my life's just gone. And of course, my income follows because the more I'm willing to be, the more I can receive, as we've talked about in the polls, you know, for the last 90 days. So I hope that's all, you know, like that's, that's what I would do is just look at each one of these choices and go, what would my life be like in five years? Yes or no? No. Okay. Done. Off the, the table. The thing is, I think all of them would like, my life would be awesome in five years, but I want my life to be awesome. Like right now this year. <laughs> so what could you choose that would actualize a life greater than you could possibly imagine right away? <sighs> and I do want to add to that. Um, something that seems really obvious, 
which is that where you'll be in five years is not where you're going to start now. Mm -hmm. And you can't actually control the speed at which things show up. You can just be willing to choose like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So like, I know that I can choose faster, really fast. I can choose really fast. I'm willing to actualize things really fast. I'm willing to move really fast. And so from my point of view, um, what I would desire for my world is that I choose at the speed I'm actually capable of to see what I'm actually capable of to see how fast it can show up if it can show up. Like that's my point of view about business. And so I remember I took this one course with uh, Janine Blackwell. She's an online coach and um, she's great. She, she makes great money. Um, but her course was this eight week thing. And when I signed up for it, it didn't start till two weeks later. And then every week a module was meted out. And I was like, I could have been through this fucking course in about four hours. So I lost interest and I quit and I paid a thousand dollars for it. And I was just like, Oh, I don't even care. I don't even care what you have to say now. So you also have to know how you function and know, like, you know, is it going to work better for me to create my own pace, like to create my own? Cause that's what, like really what I'm creating for you guys is a container. I'm creating a container where you can get some coaching in a small group setting so that other people's questions can contribute to what you're creating. I'm creating a container where you can be in a larger group once a month, a Facebook container, um, a Facebook live every week. So you can have constant contribution to your pool, but really it's going to be self-directed. And for me, that works, right? And there's going to be input, lots of input. And if you have questions about things, I'm going to teach you how to do shit. Um, but it's going to be directed by you because who wants to be told what to do? I don't like to be told what to do. And um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's, and that's why Gary, like Gary always says that in classes too. He's like, you got to get people's questions before you start the class. He's like, because the only thing that can show up is what people are willing to receive. So the way the other re this reality things are structured is like, they're like, I'm going to deliver to you this information. Cause I promised I was going to deliver to you this information. And you're like, yes, I have to make sure that I take this information because I paid it. But none of that actually looks at, Hey, where are you right now? What could you be right now? What can you choose right now? What can you actualize right now? Um, it just like delivers a boatload. And we have this weird point of view that we're missing a lot of information. Now, some of that's true. Like some of this, you're going to have to educate, we have to educate ourselves on, right? Like if you are a facilitator and you want your online business to expand, you've got some education to do, honey. And the way I do that is like, I create something and then I educate myself along the way. Cause like, it's boring for me to just sit down and educate myself. Like, I don't know if any of you guys remember high school, but that was fucking boring as shit. Right. Required, but I've learned more algebra when I've had to like sort out what the formula is to get on my spreadsheet so that I can figure out the thing so that I can get that number than I ever did sitting in a classroom. So that's my point of view. So what do you know is what my question is. Like, what do you know? And if you weren't confusing it with confusion, <laughs> what would you just know? I just wish that I, I thought I like, I just trust my awareness. Like I'm aware of so much and I'm just, I, I literally feel like I need someone to just give me permission. I need to hire a permission coach. Just like, you okay, permission. Yes, permission. I'm going to give it to you for free. Although if you want to pay me, so it makes you feel better. I'll give you my PayPal. <laughs> you, have permission, you have permission to follow your awareness <laughs> and you have permission to completely fuck it up. No, she can't. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, she can't. <laughs> I hear you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes! Fuck yes. it up! Woohoo! <laughs> do it wrong, do it badly, do it anyway, sister. Yeah. Um, I keep asking for more clients, doing energy polls, making videos, writing, what's going on here and how do I change it? Okay, and I, I know Jennifer, she's awesome. I see her videos a lot. My question would be, what are you not willing to be that if you would be it would totally change your business? What are you not willing to be that if you would be it would totally change your business and everything that doesn't allow that to show up. Can we destroy it and create it right? Wrong. Good, bad, pot, fuck, online shorts, boys and meows. What are you not willing to be that if you would be it would change your business? Gary gets so frustrated on these calls. It's so funny. Um, I just did the business calls with him and he's like, it's not about what you have to do. It's what you have to be. Why doesn't anybody understand that? <laughs> I'm like, Gary, most people don't speak your language, Gary. We don't get that. We're like trying to be all linear and shit, but I'm starting to get it. It's like, what are you not willing to be that if you would be, it would change your business. And the second piece of like, what are you not committed to? Like, and, and, and it's not quite this, but it's sort of like, what are you not committed to that if you would commit to, it would create instantly. 
And really all commitment is, is a choice. That's all commitment is. We've made commitment into this big hairy thing of like, I have to commit to this, which is so light, right? Like, no, that's completely heavy. It's just choosing it. It's like, what are you not choosing? What choices do you have available to you that you're not choosing that if you would choose them would completely expand your business? What is actually right there for you to choose that you know you're not choosing, that if you would choose it would dynamically expand your life? Most of us know what those, like most of us get a sense of that and we're like, yeah, I'm not choosing to, right? The other thing I would play with, with all of that, if you're doing a lot of stuff and you feel like things aren't happening for you, um, is look at what can you change? Okay, so you're doing videos, so you're doing all this stuff, so you're doing all this stuff. What could you change? So if you're doing videos and um, let's just say every time you do a video, you're in super casual clothes, what would it change if you changed up your clothes? If you're doing videos and you always do them one way, what would, it what would, what would get created if you changed and did them a different way? If you're, what are you not willing to change? That if you would change, it would give you more awareness. What have you not done? What have you not chosen? What choices do you actually have that if you would choose them would give you more awareness? <laughs> There's a theme. <laughs> cool. Um, let's see here. What else? Annette, how do you know which way to go or how did you learn to have confidence in light and heavy? Um, well, first of all, you always know which way you want to go. You're just always willing to talk yourself out of it. So every single time, every single thing you've done to talk yourself out of what you know, can we just unravel like 1% of that? Times a gazillion, right? Wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys, and You always know what you desire to choose. So it's a little bit like when people um, say, well, where do you want to eat? And you go, oh, I don't know. I don't care. Well, how about here? No, I don't want that. Let's go here. <laughs> always know well how about this place no let's go to this <laughs> so Itachi Aya, um how about you sign up for um, all three classes um, and so how do you know which way to go so I really do play with it one of the coolest conversations in Ben Cap was around how Gary chooses and how fast it is. And he's like, when you're willing to choose from yes, no, you actually create the fastness you're asking for. So all of us are asking for the speed, right? The speed of things showing up. We want to be where we are, we were, where we will be in five years. We want to be there now. The way you get there is you be willing to choose like that. Yes, no. You don't think about it. You don't go into confusion. You don't go into I don't know. You don't go into parts and pieces of you. You just go, truth, will this create the life I desire to have in five years? Yes or no? No. Okay, done off the table, not even gonna look at it again. Truth, will this create the life I desire to have in five years, yes or no? Yes. Okay, that makes no sense, I'm in. <laughs> so if you choose like that with the yes or no, instead of going into the light and heavy, so a lot of what, ooh, so much. A lot of what we do with light and heavy is we try to make light and heavy into a feeling. Light and heavy is not a feeling, it's not in your body, it's a sense. And the easiest way to get it is when you go truth, yes or no, and go with whatever pops. And that's going to actually give you your, your awareness. And what's cool about that, and I asked, I double checked with Gary because uh, I realized after he talked about this, how much I slow this down with the trying to feel, I was still trying to feel light and heavy. Like, what will my life be like in five years? I think that feels lighter. <laughs> uh, I said, when you do this yes, no thing, I said, do you instantly get an awareness of the future? And because a lot of the conversation in benevolent capitalism was about creating the future today, right? You're including the choice, you're including the future in the choices you're making today. Instead of just creating for hand to mouth, you're actually including the future. And I started, I had started doing that more and now I'm doing that even more of like, okay, so every time I create a video as an example, where can I put this that will create for now and in the future? Every time I create a landing page or I create a website, where can I, how can I create this in a way that will create for now and the future? And that's not a linear thing. Like that's just the question you have to begin to function from. Um, I know one of, in the very beginning, I was doing a lot of very specific 
product videos like that really were only relevant to one creation one time. And I was like, oh, I want to change that so that I actually have a series of videos that can be shared on a variety of different topics about anything all the time. And if I'm creating those videos around a certain um, launch of a program, that's fine. But maybe I'll put the invitation to the launch as a link instead of in the video so that the video can be evergreen. The video can actually be shared now and in the future. Also, all these videos I do have audio. So there's also other places that these little tidbits of audio can go, like on SoundCloud. Um, you've got SoundCloud, you've got Instagram, you've got Facebook, you've got YouTube, you've got all these different platforms that people can potentially find you on. I had a client that came and found me on YouTube and came and did coaching with me for $5,000 for three months, just like that. She's like, I've been watching you on YouTube, I wanna coach with you. I'm like, okay, it's five grand. She's like, okay, we started that next day. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's looking at everything you create for now and in the future. Now I'm watching all your faces and you're all wilting a little bit like, like you need some water. You've been in the sun too long. <laughs> so <laughs> does anybody have any questions? This doesn't look like it's lifting your spirits. It's sort of like, oh Where's my that? God. Yes. I have a question. Okay, go. Uh, what I'm noticing is that I'm still comparing myself to how other people are uh, doing their business. So I'm looking at, for, okay, they're doing it like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should try also to do it like that. But I've done that. It's not really working. So do you okay. have uh, some kind of tip for that? <laughs> yeah. How would I do business? How do I do business? You got to start asking that question. Like, what does business want to show up like for me? Okay. And just start asking and start choosing. And I also started looking at really looking at the whole need and tug conversation in regards to this, because there's been so much in my life where when I absolutely required it or when I absolutely desired it, it was just instantly actualized. And I'm like, I'm not doing that a lot with my business. I'm doing a lot of linearity with my business. And so if I were being that with my business, what would I be aware of? What would I create? How do I create? Yeah. And start playing with that. Okay. I know that's not an answer, but there is no answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have so many ideas that are willing to come out and then I'm looking for how do I get those ideas out into the world or... Yeah, so, yeah. so can you get, give me one example. Um, well, I'm, the, the thing that's most, uh, uh, that's going on for me right now is the thing with how you can change your world by, uh, looking from the heart and from the mind to connect those two together and, and, uh, live for, uh, stress-free with, mm -hmm. uh, well, I've been to the, the, uh, the class with uh, Joe Dispenza in the Netherlands uh, last two weeks. And that's something that really uh, yeah, speaks to me. And okay. now I'm trying to, no, trying, trying is not a good word, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, it matches the I'm energy. looking for <laughs> how to, um, yeah, make that work for people so I can help people with that. Okay, so the first thing is you don't want to make it work for people. You want to invite people to what you know. You want to invite people to? You want to invite people to what you know. Okay, yes. So the, everywhere you guys are trying to make your business work for people, could we please destroy it and create that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. You don't make you work for the world. You, make the, you invite the world to what it is you know. Okay. Okay. So with that as an awareness, what can you begin to create and generate and actualize that would invite the world into the, what you're aware of? You want me to give you another example? I give you an example or you give me an example. <laughs> okay, you give me an example. <laughs> um, well, when you, <laughs> I'm at my office right now. Uh, I'm not going to show you, but I have all kinds of, like this, papers, books, thrifts, notebooks, everywhere to write things down. It's sort of chaotic. Uh-huh. So, so it's time to start actualizing something. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 
So what, so here's some interesting tidbits um, of bits of information to put into your world. Video is one of the most powerful creators on the planet right now. Yeah. Tip number two, if you do a video from a Facebook business page, you can boost it to people who wouldn't normally see your video. Tip number three, once they see a video, you can give them somewhere to play. So there's all kinds of virtual where places for people to play. Facebook groups are a great invitation. Like you can do a free Facebook group and with your videos. So let's say this whole topic you want to look at like, so right now I'm in the process of creating a business with someone and I'm looking at, we want to invite people to a different possibility with stress. Right. And I'm one of the things I'm asking myself to generate content from myself. Cause I have lots of content in here. It's just, yes, you know, me asking too. me a question to get it out is what are the decisions, judgments and computations that create stress? Because first of all, people don't know the decisions, computations, and conclusions create stress, and they don't know that the decisions and the computations and the conclusions are running their life, and then they don't know what to do with it. So what are all the different things that create this thing that everybody in the world seems to be struggling from right now? I can think of about 82. <laughs> <laughs> When I do my best, I come to 100, I guess. <laughs> right? Like about 82, just around family. So if you have a decision that you owe your family, you have stress, right? So you could do a three-minute video on what do you do when you feel like you owe your family and your head starts to thrum and your mom's doing that thing that she does, right? Yeah. Um, when you have a decision that you, your sister... I can just make shit up, you know, just there's so many around family alone, you know, decisions that actually create stress. So, so that was the question I asked myself is like, what's creating this in people's worlds? And what do I know about this that I can invite them where I can make a video about it and invite them to a different possibility? So it doesn't have to be videos. It can, there's plenty of people that have created big followings and businesses with blogging um, with, you know, um, doing webinars. Like there's, there's different ways to engage and inspire people online. And you've just got to start to either play with all of these different ways or, and could be, or, and, and, um, start to look at, Hey, do I love to write? Do I love talking? Can I get over my point of view about video? Um, do I love, you know, we start to look at what you love and this is where you begin to integrate really the way you function into the business and ideas that you have. Yeah. I love to write and I love to talk, but talking on video is also a little, but I'll, I'll get over it. <laughs> yeah. And cool. So that then, you, so I would just start. So yes. make a, make a list of like five or six or even one thing that you could do a video about and create a Facebook page and boost it. Like play with one facet of this for a little while and see what, and just see what it creates, not to, for a conclusion, just to go, Hey, what happens when I do this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, how, I have now so many things in my head that want to come out that I don't know what to choose. Yeah. You just have to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And you can look at your list of things and go, Hey, what wants to be first? Like go yes or no. Yes. Who, what wants to be first? Who wants to be first? See where your eyes land and go, okay, you, you're first. What's next? <laughs> what, I'm going to just choose something. Yes. Helpful? Yes, thank you. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and you guys, like, this is exactly why I'm creating the six months, because this is one conversation. And then we're going to leave this, and you're going to go out there and start creating. And as you're creating, shit's going to come up. And as you're creating, you're going to like, get stuck in the mire of ideas again. And as you're creating, like, stuff, so that's, if there was a reason to choose that, that would be why I created it, because I get it. Um, the creation of your business. So one of my favorite things that Gary said in the business calls was like, he's like, you guys keep doing this thing with your business where you separate it from you. You make it its own entity. He's like, and you can do that. And I know that's a popular conversation and access of like your business is an entity and you need to ask it questions and you need to like commune with it. It's an entity. He's like, but what if business was the creation of your life? That's really different. Like, what if your business was the creation of your life and the creation of your life is business? And that's where it's so funny. I was so glad he said that because I was like, I was just saying that in my head the other day. I'm like, there's no separation for me from business and life. Like, they are exactly the same thing. 
And so whatever's going on in my life also then can contribute to my business in the ideas that I get and the things that I implement. Because here's the other thing, you guys, as humanoids, and with the awareness that you're psychic, is that you're psychic. So if it's going on for you, it's likely going on for a lot of other people, is the other fun fact, right? If you're aware of something, it's probably up for a lot of the population. Oneness includes everything and judges nothing. So that's the other piece about creating business from your awareness, is you actually have a superpower that you're not taught to tap into. So trust me, when you're having mom issues, you're not the only one. You are probably aware of everyone else in the world who's having mom issues, right? If, there's, if it's in the ethers to create something around stress, it's up to change. What does that mean? There's a whole new marketplace open to you that nobody's publicizing anywhere. Guess who knows? You do, because you're willing to be aware. This is the gift of awareness. This is how you lead yourself to money. I had like five people messaging me at one point about how to change or raising their prices. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna do a call. What's, I don't know what it's gonna create. I created another $1,000. Out of just, you know what I mean? So, but it was like, I had enough people asking me, I was just willing to go, what can I create with this? Oh, a call, easy. I just plug this in here, plug this in here, put it out there, see what people choose. That's how easy creating can be when you're willing to be aware, when you're willing to follow your awareness. So I want to invite you to the possibility that you know, the possibility that you're capable, the possibility that you actually can choose and play and get awareness, and, and the possibility that that's fun <laughs> and not like death. I'm going to see if I can get to one more question here. Does anybody else have anything while I'm scrolling through these? How do you make money? You ask for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you ask for it. You look at how much you desire. You get, your, get clear on your numbers. And this will be part of it as well. You get clear on what your numbers are. What do I mean by that? How much do you actually spend? How much do you want to travel? How much do you, is it, does it require to run your business? How much does it require? How much do you require to run your life? You get really clear. You start asking for that amount of money and you start choosing and creating and money shows up in all these weird ways. We'll be doing energy pulls on that too. Um, I think that might be it. Maggie wrote me in real quick. She's like, um, there's something sneaky going on when I sleep. I'm going to bed jazzed and waking up not so jazzed. I know it's not me. When I'm truly being me, I wake up with joy and literally jump out of bed and get grooving. What's this weird shit I'm choosing and what's it going to take to change it? Honestly, I would just ask who am I being and what would I like to choose in the mornings? What can I choose? What can I choose that's different? Happiness is a choice. And some, like yesterday, I, I had that running through my head, crystal happiness is a choice. And I was like grumpy as fuck. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not choosing it. <laughs> so I just acknowledged I wasn't choosing it and moved on. And then I had a friend ask me some questions. So you literally just ask yourself, what other choices do I have available? And then I was like, I got, I got bored with being grumpy, which is when I asked a friend to, to ask me some questions. So it's just, just what other choices do you have available to you that you've never considered? And what can you choose that would change this for you completely? Can you say anything about creating a sustainable future with your business? Um, can you ask me a more specific and question? Specifically, how do you set up your business so that you have clients in the future when you get there? So is what you're creating now doing that? No, maybe. Truth? No. Okay. So what could you create that would do that? I don't know. That's not true. Um, so I happen to know that you watch a lot of people. You dissect what they're doing. You look closely at what they're doing. So where could you use that capacity to reverse engineer somebody else's system to discover what you could create yourself? I can do that. <laughs> yes you can <laughs> cool all right y'all well that's our hour thank you so much and of course you're invited to the next six months and we start on tuesday and 
it's gonna it's a big melee of you can join at a bunch of different levels so if what you would like is just you know weekly so like weekly infusion into your business. I'll be a weekly Facebook live and an energy poll. You can play at that level. If you'd really prefer to play with a small group of people every other week, you can play at that level. If you want to add to that one-on-one -on -one time with me, you can play at that level. And if you'd just like to play one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. So I will roll that page out. You guys can check it out. And thank you so much for being here. And thank you for everything you're creating in the world. I'm so grateful. Hello. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome. See you guys somewhere in the world. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.